This video was recorded in front of a live virtual audience. Hello everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today we're going to be reviewing a cultural phenomenon of sorts because for many generations, many families, kids, elderly in between all ages have been using the Nivea cream. So we will be reviewing not exactly the Nivea cream, but we will be reviewing the Nivea perfume, the Eau de Toilette, actually. We're going to be unboxing it and reviewing it together. I'm trying to lift it so you can see the text there. You have it, the little name just protruding there. So um, the Eau de Toilette, which is basically the only concentration that... Uh, Nivea or Bayersdorf, or whoever is uh, the manufacturer of this uh, brand. I think Bayersdorf is UK limited. Bayers, I don't know. I think Bayersdorf is the producer, is the owner of Nivea. Anyway, so this is uh, the packaging. Now, listen, the perfume is supposed to smell like the cream. The classic cream. The classic cream. A classic perfume well they want to make it become a classic but a lot of people have been saying throughout the decades that they like how the cream smells and Nivea delivered with the rendition in liquid form in fragrance form of the scent of the cream does it smell like the cream or does it not smell like the cream well that's what we're gonna find out today <laughs> okay so let me open it as I'm opening this let me remind you guys uh, to uh, subscribe Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And um, push the notifications button for whatever it's worth. Uh, you can also join me, become a member today and get extra perks on my channel. Become a member. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together. And I would like to thank all my patrons and members who have already pledged and who are also part of the chat in the live chat stream happening right now. So to the side here, I have my wonderful co-reviewers, uh, co-reviewing this fragrance with me. So thank you guys. I will be reading your comments in just a bit. So let's unbox it. It's a very cheap box. I mean, a little bit of ASMR. It's a plastic foil, transparent plastic foil. I, I think it's aesthetically really beautiful. Flimsy as a mofo, but, but beautiful for what it is. We're going to open it. So you see on the inside how simple the structure is. You can't pull anything really out because it's blocked here. So the trick to not damage the box is to just put these little wings down and slide. Oh, I just got a paper cut. Damn it. Okay, Nivea is not collaborating today. So and you just slide it out like that. And then here... You see, you have that little kind of place where it lays. It's a little bed. It looks like a futuristic, if you would really like zoom in close and like jump with a camera inside the box, it almost looks like some futuristic, it almost looks like the inner circle of the round table from Dr. Strangelove, the Stanley Kubrick movie. One of my favorites. Anyway, so that's the interior of the box. Check my paper cut. Eh. Okay, I'm not bleeding. At least that's good. And then inside... Now, this is clever. The design uh, is really interesting. See, my hair is all over the place. Sorry for that, because the hoodie is pushing my hair. Okay, so the clever design here. What's the clever design? The clever design is that usually, you know, the Nivea box, the metal container, the aluminum container. ASMR. I'm scratching the protruding text here because you see it's protruding Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> creepy right anyway so we're used to the blue color but the cream itself is white so the idea was marketing wise I guess from the design team was like oh let's give the liquid Let's give the perfume the smell of the cream. Since the cream is white, the notion of this fresh whiteness is depicted and portrayed within the tin, the white tin, the white spray-painted tin. When you lift it, you have this inversion, positive with negative. 
instead of having the white cream inside, you do have the blue, a velvet blue, actually. More ASMR. Touching the velvet. And you have the white cream laying inside. So, again, white, blue, white again. As if that weren't enough, when we take the little bottle out of its little bed, we have a blue uh, kind of sprayer pump on top again. So we have the white, blue, white, blue repetition going on. And the cream, uh, you see, <laughs> making the mental error, uh, the, uh, the perfume comes in this white, well, actually it's a transparent bottle that has been spray painted white, so this could peel off or rub off with time. This is a 30 milliliter liquid spray. And that's why for the occasion I have purchased a very small Nivea cream because this is a 30 milliliter cream. So you can see in the back. There you have it, 30 mil, and this is 30 mil as well. Now look at the difference. So this whole packaging, layer upon layer upon layer, this is how marketing works, you guys. Layer upon layer upon layer, looks big to justify the, the cost of something that comes this small. When you buy the 30 mil Nivea cream, you literally don't get a box with it. This is what you get. This is what you get, this small. Something this small, uh, this cost me 90 cents. 90 cents, okay? This one was like around $25. For the same quantity, now I know it's different. One is a perfume, one is a cream. Liquids and solids are different, yada, yada. But I'm just comparing. We're comparing the smell. We're also comparing the price. 30 mil for the cream, under a dollar. 30 mil for the perfume, $25. Okay, but you do get a glass container and this and that. Okay, so let's spritz it. It's the cream. <laughs> now it's it's the cream, but let's let's put the cream on the hand. So right, so this is it's brand new. So it still has its little aluminum kind of protection foliage thing on top. So we're gonna lift it open, and that's how the cream looks. See the white cream inside. They're mimicking the white of the cream as the white of the bottle. Of course, we now understood the whole spiel, the whole joke going on there. We get it. We get it, Nivea. Okay, so I'm going to get a little bit of the cream. And I'm going to close this up because we got spotlights everywhere. So with the heat, I don't want this to melt and kind of leak. So let's just close it. And I'm going to put it here. Let's hydrate myself a little. Because I've been working a lot these past two weeks and I've been washing my hands a lot to stay, you know, always, always, um, I, you got to nuke all the bacteria and viruses and everything off of you. So my hands are very, very dry. So it's actually good that I put some Nivea on it. I mean, it, <laughs> conceptually speaking, it is the same smell. It's just that when you add the actual ma materials utilized, the waxes, the fats, the oils, the cream texture combined with the perfume, it does have, it translates differently on the skin, but it is the same smell. Like you, re you, you can smell out the DNA of Nivea in both of them. Of course, in a much more lightified, lighter way in the in the cream than you would from the perfume. But let, let's get to the notes. Um, it's kind of interesting. So it came out in 2015. The nose behind it is Isabel Abram or Abram. Um, floral fragrance for women and men. So they do cater to both genders. This is already good. I'm happy that Nivea is like not, you know, they're just saying, hey, anybody can wear that, which is the way it should be. Uh, one of the best known companies for skincare, Nivea, launches a Nivea uh, in Eau de Toilette in October 2015. This is not the first edition of this fragrance. There's a tw 2011 version as well. Really? 
So which one am I smelling? I think I'm smelling the current one. Nivea is a scent of freshness, cleanliness, and care, or the scent of most famous cream in the world. Of the scent. Oh, my God. For Grantica, your grammar, girl. <laughs> anyway, uh, the composition opens with citrusy and clean notes of bergamot, mandarin, and lavender. The heart is a bouquet of lily of the valley, rose, freesia, and ylang ylang, woody shades of sandalwood, wrap the base together with powdery accords. The creation is signed by Isabel Abram. Right, top notes, lavender, bergamot, mandarin, orange, mid notes, freesia, ylang ylang, lily of the valley, and rose. Base notes, powdery notes, which we don't know what they are, right? And sandalwood. Powdery notes is usually iris of some sort. It's made in Italy, by the way. There you have the made in Italy note tag. However, the cream doesn't state where it's made, which is really surprising to me that a product is allowed to not have a place of manufacturing legally on it. So, I don't know where it's made, the cream. Bizarre, but. I'm going to tell you that there's something. So I have tested it out the other day uh, just to see, just to go through it a couple of times from head notes all the way to the dry down. And I can tell you that it doesn't, when you first spray it out of the bottle onto your skin, it has its Nivea. Then throughout the whole process of mid, like the middle part of the opening notes, the middle part of the top notes, because the top note, the top notes as well have, a lifespan so even a top note can be dissected in the top of the top note the middle part of the top note and the bottom part of the top note i know this is crazy but it can so so as the top notes start to evolve it loses it kind of veers off the track it's not nivea anymore that much and then the mid notes are not nivea at all and then in the dry down you really get Nivea again, like it returns in full bloom. Like when it comes, when it gets really, when it sticks really close to the skin, when it becomes very, 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 very light, like you can't smell it anymore in the room around you, but you can only smell it in the dry down when you really put your nose into it, you warm it, you heat up the skin where you sprayed it and you inhale and that smell that you get at the end of the bottom of the base notes, that's Nivea the cream. Completely. Completely. That's when it returns in full bloom. But the whole midsection of the fragrance, to me, it's not Nivea anymore. And what is very, very dominant for me is Freesia. I would say Freesia. Lily of the Valley, there's a little bit of that bitterness of the Lily, but Lily of the Valley, but it's not really a... It, it, it has a bitter subtone. Uh, that is and could be lily of the valley but it's freesia and lily of the valley rose is not so dominant here ilang ilang i think maybe it's killed off by the lavender <laughs> this is not a lavender heavy fragrance this is not a fragrance that is you know some fragrances are like all up in your face lavender this one they have really toned it down it's very 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 subdued and you don't really it's not the dominant part of it. I think what really dominates here is the mandarin orange, the powdery notes, whatever type of sandalwood they used. It smells very synthetic, though. But if you battle your way through those opening notes and mid notes, the dry down is really heavenly and very, very pleasant. Strange thing I've noticed if I spray it just like once or twice and just let it linger on, the opening is very, very, very powdery and very freesia heavy and very intense. Uh, and if you spray it a lot all over yourself, it's going to be too much powder for you. It's going to be powder all over the place. And you're really going to be inhaling heavy powder, which is kind of cool as well, conceptually speaking, but you're going to suffer through it. So you ha so it's so bizarre. But even if you spray a lot of it, 
<laughs> that's a funny thing about this one. It's still going to dry down really quickly. And in the mid notes, it's going to really stay really close to the skin. It's not going to project a lot. But if you first, you know, put a little cloud all over yourself, like spray it like 10 times, you're going to suffocate yourself. And then 20 minutes later, you won't smell it anymore until unless you don't come really close to your skin. And then even longer after that, let's say after 40 minutes or one hour have passed, you're going to get to the dry down and then the Nivea cream really appears. And it is a pleasant, clean scent, just like the bottle kind of suggests because it's white and clean and it's really an ice white. It's because there's different shades of white, obviously, but this white is like with a very high component of blue in it. So it's a very cool, it's a very, very cool, cool, cool white color. Uh, and that's kind of the smell of the fragrance as well. I mean, it is a floral, but with a heft, it does have an oily smell to it. It's it's almost, I dare I say, like you mixed olive oil in with the rest of the fragrance. There's a bit of olive oil in there. And the olive oil gives it, which is probably the lily of the valley, but to me it smells almost like olive oil. It gives it that bitter note. You know, my grandmother, I know it was super unhealthy, but she was that way. She loved doing it. Uh, she would, under the sun, she would not use sun protectant. She would always take olive oil. Yes, olive oil. And she would rub olive oil in her skin. And that would be her like lotion, <laughs> her potion lotion against the sun. Terrible. You shouldn't do it. Whatever. She loved doing it. She had a great skin, all I have to say, until her dying day. It, it worked well for her, but whatever. Um, so I know the smell of olive oil on the skin. It does... Under the sun, it can have a little bitter note to it. And this smells a little bit like there's olive oil in here under the sun. Uh, Nivea does give me a smell of sun. It feels very sunny. The powdery sunniness of it all, kind of. So it's a very comforting scent. It's a calming and soothing scent. Once that slight bitterness uh, has, has toned down, in, in some way, shape, or form. Um, it takes its time, though. Now, once it has taken its time, as I said, it's very close to the skin. So you're basically paying almost $30 for 30 mil, which is a dollar per milliliter, which, in my opinion, for a perfume like this, not worth it. I think this one should be in the more cheapy range. So I think this one should be 10 to 15 bucks. Uh, and also, I mean, I get it. Like the, the packaging, you know, the little tin box. Which is, it's cute. It's a nice little package. But 25 to 30 bucks. Mm -mm. This is a 10 to 15 dollar. 20 tops if you're buying it directly from Nivea. You know, because they always up the price. Like when the brand sells its own thing. And then when you get it somewhere else, uh, like on Amazon, I might get an affiliate link for this one and post it under this video so that uh, you guys can follow the link. On Amazon, it's cheaper than getting it directly from Nivea. So, you know, but yeah. So the time, uh, the A Traveler says, Bayersdorf owns Nivea, uh, Eucerin, Labello, Coppertone, and surprise, surprise, they own La Prairie. Oh, there you have it. David says, the cream is thick. Yes, it is. It is. It's very thick. <laughs> uh, Maximo CG says, I wonder how you spray that. Oh, like here. Uh, Patrick says, oh, my Nivea today. Such a nostalgic smell. Strange packaging, says Debbie. Tatiana Catherine says, that's some futuristic packaging. Rich Mitt says, it's so cool. Uh, uh, Emilio says, it's also giving YSL new, to be honest. What else? What other comments we got here? Uh, Richmond says, love that shade of blue. It's a beautiful blue. It definitely is. It's almost like royal blue. MK says, maybe because of the futuristic vibes. Richmond says, the white has blue in it too. Yes, this white has blue in it. Um, at least, okay. <laughs> 
There is, yes, Emilio, there is a for men version of it as well, but this is the unisex one. Gurchanan says, Nivea cream is made in Germany since it has been from 1911. But why don't they state that on the box, though, on the tin? Jam says, I can't stand Nivea cream. I only like the men's version only because of the texture. It is much lighter. Um, Emilio says, the algae ingredient in La Mer, the... Uh, sorry, guys, I lost the comment. Just a second. The algae ingredient in La Mer, the broth, is just a fancy hydrator. Uh, hyaluronic acid does the exact same job. Jam says, uh, some people say La Mer, uh, the man didn't even exist. Okay. <laughs> the only, um, Patrick says, the only uh, thing differentiating it from Nivea is a seaweed extract that produces lactic acid. In small amounts, they are both very basic formulations, La Mer and Nivea. La Mer, we've heard, allegedly, Kate Moss uses the facial La Mer all over her body. This is just alleged, but how fabulous is that? But here we have a lot of people telling us in the chat that La Mer is kind of just like Nivea. David says, I get a lot of freesia and powder. Yeah, a lot of freesia. I love powdery fragrances. I cannot, for the life of me, find this online. I live in Canada and I need this in my life. It's on Amazon, dude. <laughs> Amelia says, I, okay, that was, wait, you said, I love Elizabeth Arden, visible difference cream. It has retinol in it. Um, so I see people are really into the, uh, the Nivea cream and the substance and the quality of it. Uh, hey, Asian Delight, how you doing, sweetie? Welcome, see me. Welcome, welcome to the chat, sweetie. Oh, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to the chat, sweetie. Welcome, welcome. Mr. Philip, fabulous. I love Nivea cream. Use it in winter because it's so thick, but I love the smell of it. I mean, I do prefer the smell of Nivea to the smell of the Nivea perfume just because I remember it from my childhood. So now that my skin is absorbing it, it has, it has a very wonderful, delicate, delicate smell. The Nivea smell. The perfume... Is becoming a bit rosy, but still it's powder, powder, freesia and powder and lily of the valley. Those are kind of the three components for me. Sandalwood, I don't really get in here because I'm used to really good quality sandalwood. So this here is, it ain't a, you know, it ain't a sandalwood. It's sandalwood. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a hint of sandalwood. Uh, but uh, yeah. Um, Heidelberger, hello, sweetie. Welcome to the chat. Been using it for more than 10 years and nothing compares. I mean, the cream. Uh, Jam says La Prairie is way too expensive. And let me tell you something, Jam. I have tried La Prairie several times. I always get, I don't know if, if some of the active ingredients in there are a bit too harsh for me, but I always get a skin rash from it. I don't react very well with La Prairie. I did try it a couple of times. David, do you get an almondy something? No, I don't. To me, maybe what you think is like almondy, it's like that powdery note in it combined with the lily of the valley. We always tend to underestimate lily of the valley, you guys, because it's such a tiny little flower. It's such a tiny little thing. You almost kind of, when you read it in the ingredients, you think lily of the valley, eh, what's it going to be? Don't be fooled by the lily of the valley. First of all, it's a mofo when it comes to poison. It can kill you if you eat it. And second of all, even though it's a delicate kind of scent, it permeates. It, it's like one of those little guys. You think they're little. You think they can't do much. But they, res they have the resistance and the stamina of a giant. That's a lily of the valley. And a lily of the valley can dominate a perfume. It really can. It's a very intense smell, actually. So we tend to underestimate it. Hey, Mikey, welcome to the chat. As a German, I have a long history with this cream. Sadly, I'm allergic to the panthenol in it. Oh, dear. Well, have you tried the perfume? The perfume doesn't seem to have panthenol in it, does it? Let me read the ingredients, you guys. Let's get to the ingredients of the perfume. Alcohol, aqu aqua water, parfum, limonene, linalol, geraniol, benzyl alcohol, citronolol, however you pronounce it, benzyl salicylates, alpha isomethyl ionone, citral, cumarin, and eugenol. So... It sounds like names of my cousins. Hey, Eugenio, how's it doing? Hey, Kumare, welcome, welcome to the chat. Hey, Citrol, how's it going, sweetie darling? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, and then I got this hyper male cousin, the Alpha Isometil Yonone. 
I'm like, yo known coming to my party if you're going to act all alpha again. Okay, yo known? Yo known coming. Alpha is a until yo known. Oh, yo known to me. And yo known coming. So anyway, uh, I remember trying to find my shade from La Mer Foundation range and I asked my essay why the shade range is so small. Her answer was, we're in Europe, darling. Oh my God, Amelia, the shade. How dare she get her fired? Gurcharan, <laughs> just please don't use the Nivea cream on your face. Patrick says, it's a poor blocker, LOL. You know, uh, it is said, allegedly, that Marilyn Monroe used Nivea cream on her face and Vaseline on her face. And she got no issues with pores. Well, she didn't back then, at least. A Lily of the Valley is one of my favorites, says Tatiana. Jam says, agree, it will block your pores. Debbie says, the La Mer Foundation I had a sample of, it is good. <laughs> uh, Aisha says, I love Lily of the Valley. Heidelberger says, I love La Prairie. Oh, you have tried the wrong products. They are very potent and are designed for dry, mature skin. That's why you reacted to it. Possibly, possibly, possibly. Um, um, Emilio says, please do use the Nivea cream on your face, but know how to use it. There's no such thing as a pore blocking uh, ingredient. Okay, thank you. I'm loving the debate, you guys. This is so wonderful. For those of you who, who are just watching this video in the future and clicked on it to watch a review of the Nivea perfume, you see there's so much more to it than just a perfume because... Buyers of the brand, as we've learned today, also is the owner of La Prairie. So we're having people commenting on La Prairie and how that compares to Nivea. Nivea the perfume comparing to Nivea the cream. Some people do not like Nivea the cream on their face. Some people love it on their face. It's all about knowing how to dose things right. It's a very fascinating conversation. And this is the reason why I decided to review Nivea, uh, because it does bring along this whole concept of usually... First, a fragrance is born, and then the bath and body range follows it, and it's usually low quality. It's just perfumed things. You know, Chanel No. 5 has its own bath and body range, but it was first and foremost Chanel No. 5, the perfume. This is kind of an interesting take. First, it was a cream, and then it became a perfume. And how does the perfume try to mimic a cream? Because usually, the perfumed creams of perfumes try to mimic a perfume. The cream tries to smell as close as possible to the perfume, giving you some sort of, you know, illusion of being well hydrated. It's while some of these brands deliver, most of them don't. However, this is an interesting inversion of the game. First, we got the cream. And then we get the perfume after that. Ooh, this could be a thumbnail. We'll see about that. Anyway, um... So it's a fascinating conversation also to see the connection. A lot of people connect Nivea to La Mer as well because they say it's very similar. I mean, as far as the smell alone goes, it stays very close to the skin. Lily of the Valley is predominant after a certain while. And then the powder, the powdery notes kick in and then becomes very dry and powdery. Uh, the cream maintains an oily texture in within the smell, which I prefer because it smells more flexible. It smells more wet and flexible in the dry down of the smell of the cream because there's more oils in it. So obviously it stays on the skin for longer. And it, ha it does have that more wet approach to the Nivea cream while the perfume smells of dry, a dried up Nivea that with time, when it hits the dry down, dry down, and it's almost gone, when you warm it up with with your nose, you warm up that part of the skin where you sprayed it and you're going to burst those molecules open and it's going to smell like the most incredible overdose of Nivea ever. So in fact, this one is amazing, amazing in the dry down. If you warm it up with your nose and you pop the molecules open, then you get magic. But it lasts only a nanosecond and then it's gone. Um, silage or silage, uh, you know, it is what it is. It stays relatively close to the skin. It lasts really short time. A lot of people, you know, have commented about this perfume that it's not worth the money because it's very short-lived. But I repeat this often in, in, in my reviews. You know, it's not just about the longevity of a perfume. It's not like you keep buying stuff because you want it to last long. Some things are meant to last the amount of time they're meant to last and you move on. Nivea is, is one of these... Uh, Things. Actually, I'm going to put some of it on this hand as well because I feel it's so dry because I have been like working a lot this week, uh, past week. And um, 
it just uh, I've been washing my hands so much because you know of the regulations you gotta so and I forgot to hydrate properly before the live stream and I feel the hands are a little bit yeah okay this is better it's delicious the smell I mean Final verdict, I prefer the smell of the cream to the smell of the perfume. However, if you can get through the top notes, mid notes, and you let that dry down hit in, then the perfume becomes a magical beast of its own. It's like a, it's like a hyper beast version of Nivea the cream. It really, it's like the Nivea cream oomphed a thousand times, despite it staying very close to the skin. So I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot, but I do prefer the smell of the Nivea cream. Let me get back to the chats. Um, Patrick says, I don't use the cream on my face mainly because I don't use fragrance in my facial skincare. It's an irritant to my facial skin, unfortunately. Daniel says, I really like the cream. It seems as effective as the very expensive creams. To me, I'll bite less fun because it costs less. <laughs> Antigone says, I tested it yesterday and today. I smell the lily of the valley very intensely for around two hours. If I overspray it, it gives me headache because the lily, as you mentioned, is so strong. I'm telling you, Antigone, it's the lily of the valley. It is the lily of the valley. Mr. Philip Fabulous says, I use Nivea cream on my face and I have oily skin. I am of the idea that you should combat oil with oil. I have super oily skin but since I regularly put oil in the evening, it has regulated it. So actually waking up in the morning um, throughout the day, my skin doesn't produce as much sebum because it doesn't feel like it's always out of sebum. You know, I, I don't use detergents to wash my face that wipe off all the oils off of it. I try to wash my face to maintain the oils to let them stay on my face so that my kind of program my skin to, to understand that it doesn't have to overproduce. But things change. In winter, it's different than in summer. You know how it is. Depends also what you eat. I think they mean comedogenic. It could cause you uh, to maybe to break out, says Jam. Um, yes, the age traveler says Marilyn Monroe used Erno Laszlo. She did, but she also used... Uh, well, Erno Laszlo made a cream just for her in particular. But also Marilyn used Vaseline as a highlighter. Okay? Vaseline as a highlighter. Let that sink in. And she used an Nivea cream as well. Skincare is my jam too, says Debbie. Uh, Asian Delight says, my grandparents love Nivea. Uh, when we traveled to Pakistan, we would take loads for them. Oh, that's so cute. But Nivea, nothing beats the smell of Nivea. Uh, lie to me, 101. Welcome to the chat, sweetie. Skincare is very individual. What works for you may not work for someone else and vice versa. I totally agree with you on that. I totally agree with you on that. Um, I work in the industry and unfortunately, a lot of people are saying things. Yeah. What things are they saying? <laughs> um, oh, that are not always true. A lot of people are saying things that are not always true in the industry. Yeah, well, of course. They would, they would sell their soul to the devil to sell a product. Uh, a lot of them. Not everyone, but a lot of them. Patrick says, I personally do not. I find the formulation pretty basic for the price range, and I'm pretty sure they put fragrance in it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Cute. I'm pretty sure, but I'm not sure. Comedogenic is an imaginary... A term used by corporations to scare people, just like natural skin care, uh, emotional manipulation. Rich Mitch says, uh, Gertrand, uh, there's a bottle of that for cheap at a place in London. Okay, they're talking about some perfumes. Patrick says, I usually stick with my drugstore babies like Eucerin and La Roche-Posay by recommendation of my dermatologist, LOL. Sure, why not? La Roche-Posay is amazing, by the way. It's a great brand. Uh, my doctor, my skin doctor also recommended a couple of products from La Roche-Posay in the past when I had really bad acne. Uh, Gurchan says, also, if anyone knows where to get a lily of the valley plant, please tell, because I can't find it anywhere here in San uh, Joaquin Valley, or in fact, anywhere in California. I mean, I think it could be even illegal, because it is poison. You can literally kill someone with it. So be very careful with lily of the valley. Um, and they do grow wild. Of course, Debbie is right. Debbie says, lily of the valley grew wild in my yard in Massachusetts. It is a wildflower. Jam says, a product that has comedogenic ingredients isn't bad in and in itself. It might be the best choice for someone with dry skin who isn't prone to acne. Your skin is different from everyone else's. Very well said, Jam. I, I agree with you. Uh, 
Marta Mahaila, welcome to the chat, sweetie. Uh, hi, Jacob. I always keep some Nivea cream at home. Best moisturizer ever. Didn't know there was a perfume. Love from Porto, Portugal. Thank you so much. A lot of love to you and to Porto. Um, damn, I love Portugal. Oh, and the food, you guys. If you're into seafood, mm, 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 mm. nothing beats. Nothing beats Portuguese cuisine. Just saying. Uh, Robert says, Nivea does not work for me at all. <laughs> Daniel says, Mae West used to also use Vaseline as a highlighter. I cannot understand how it worked. Wouldn't the Vaseline uh, dislodge the makeup underneath it? I think everything was more hardcore back then. <laughs> Tatiana, Catherine, welcome to the chat, sweetie. Vaseline as a highlighter actually works. And to darken your bra brows, can't go wrong with Vaseline. It works for a lot of things. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Mikey, I had a phase of using a red tinted Vaseline as highlighter too, feeling very Marilyn. Yes, the Marilynism, it's a it's a vibe. It's a vibe. <laughs> Daniel says, how amazing. Yasmina girl says, hello, Deco. Hello, Yasmina. Amina O says, in the movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, the father used Windex for every skin condition. <laughs> in our family, Nivea is the magic cream. Love the smell. It's soothing. Uh, Mikey Otto says, I also watched the drag queen turn a cheap licensed Maryland wig into something more Monroe looking. Funny how I'm a how I'm a day so many things tie in together. Uh, everything is holistic, Mikey. I always say it. everything's connected. Lie to me 101. Also, a lot of misinformation is being spread by customers. A lot of us is due to fear mongering. A lot of it is due to, to fear mongering, reading ingredients, greenwashing, etc. David says, is Vaseline actually good for eyebrows? I need to thicken mine. Not sure. I've never used it for eyebrows. Uh, Robert says, Vaseline can be used for many things. <laughs> Rui says, many. <laughs> and Emilia says, Vaseline is very multifunctional. Uh, I'm Louis says, many, many things Vaseline can be used for. I mean, you guys, Nivea can be used for many, many things too. Just saying. Um, <laughs> guys, and I'm going to end it on this note because the beauty of it all. We got to end we got to end on a high note, right? So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for commenting and being my live co-reviewers of this actually really fun and wonderful fragrance. It is a playful little thing. So definitely worth playing with if you are, you know, in the game. If you want to have some fun time with a cream, testing out, does the perfume smell like the cream? Does the cream smell like the perfume? We don't know. We're so mean. We're just a mean fighting machine. We're a cream and a perfume. We're the sisters of no mercy. The Niveas. Oh my God, what did I just do? I don't know. Listen, thank you guys so much for tuning in. You could, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you like this video, please do thumb it up. And uh, consider joining, subscribing and joining, becoming a member of my channel. By the way, you could also become a patron on Patreon, Super Deco All Spelled Together. Here on the side, you get to see scrolling all the names of my wonderful, wonderful patrons and members who help sustain the fashion bunker. Without y'all, it would all not be possible. So thank you so much for that. And um, listen, try out whatever perfume you want to try out. I mean, I this is a playful little review. This is, of course, not the perfume that's going to change our life. It's not the best thing we've smelled. But it was a lot of fun reviewing it. It's a lot of fun playing with it and getting to read all of your all of y'all's impressions and uh, ideas about this fragrance and what it all means to you and also the memories that a lot of you shared in the past like from childhood from from family members across other lands and continents loving Nivea and then you kind of bring it to them as a gift this is kind of one of those creams that kind of unites people and I love it for that despite of the fact who's producing it where it's manufactured just like the idea of it if we're not going to go into the morals, it, just the idea of something that unites people. Nivea is kind of a unifying factor. And I love the fact that when I started dissecting the perfume and talking about the Nivea cream, like all of y'all had something to say about it, had some sort of personal connection to it. So it united us. And that's kind of the beauty at the end of the day. That's the magic of this little cream, 30 mil cream <laughs> and the 30 mil perfume. 
at the end of the day, perfume is there to unite. Perfume is there to make us feel wonderful, safe, and put us in this little cocoon and bubble of beautiful emotions, beautiful memories. So, and it doesn't matter how much they cost. You know, 30 mil, it could have been a $300 concoction. No, still too expensive for what it is, but for 25 bucks, it's worth the refreshing of memories by smelling it, just saying. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please do thumb it up. Uh, and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Super Deco Ball Spell Together. You can also follow me on my Chanel, a dedicated Instagram profiles that I curate. One is called Coco Chanel is in my house, all spelled together, dedicated to Chanel, the brand of today and my collection. And then the other one dedicated to Coco Chanel, the woman, Coco Chanel Privé, all spelled together. Thank you guys so much. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you all. See you soon. Take care. Bye.